There's a candle for that. <laughs> Welcome to Woo Woo Wednesday. Woo Woo Wednesday. Woo Woo Wednesday. Woo Woo Wednesday. Hi YouTube Coven. This is Woo Woo Wednesday. That's what we're calling Woo -woo it this time. So today, if you can't guess, we're talking about candle magic. Today, we're drinking blackberry tea that blackberry I- Blackberry tea. I got somewhere in San Francisco. I have no idea what the brand of it is. Really good at plugging um, for brands and vendors. So she's really good at saying like, I don't know where this is from, but it. when you guys go to San Francisco, try their blackberry tea. Try any blackberry tea. But when I find out the brand, I'll let y'all know because this is some of the best tea that I own. Anyway, candle magic. I personally made these t-shirts for this special occasion. <laughs> Just uh, because candles are so versatile, I feel you can use candles for anything. Anything. Literally anything. Um, but I also think that candle magic is one of the oldest forms of magic. I agree. And I think everyone uses candle magic to some extent. When it's your birthday and you're blowing out a candle, guess what? You're doing magic. Mm -hmm. You're doing witchcraft. Because you're wishing for something with intention. Mm -hmm. When you go to church and you petition a saint and you light a candle for that saint, you're doing witchcraft. So we're, we're first we're going to uh, put like a basis of just super basic stuff about candle magic and then we're going to answer all the questions. Um, we have a lot of questions. If we already answered your question within the basic answers, I probably will just read your, co read your comment and tell you that we answered it. If it doesn't regard candle magic, I'm just going to skip over it just because this video skip. is all about candle magic. So maybe next time your, your comment or your question will be read, but just for this video it's specifically about candle magic, so we're going to cover that today, okay? I really want to change into like a skirt because it's kind of hot in here. Do it. Okay, well, you, Dylan's gonna tell you about the basics of candle magic while I change. Oh. Go, go, go. The go, basics go. of candle magic. Uh -huh. Okay. Woo, hello. You're mine now. Okay, so, this is a candle. You can use candle magic in many ways. You can use it for sympathetic magic. Sympathetic magic meaning that it represents something or the candle is going to represent a desired person, intent, something along those lines. Uh, what I love about candle magic is that it's moldable. You're essentially, it's a wonderful tool. You're using the candle to infuse and put in your petition and all your energy um, into the candle, okay? Uh, another thing too for all you people who are beginning um, spell casters or spell workers or beginning witches or witches in training, the candle is a wonderful way to make sure that you are keeping up with your spell work because one of the things that you don't want to do in spell work, welcome back. Thank you. Uh, there are things you will have to edit and cut. That's fine. Awesome. One of the things for beginning uh, witches or beginning spell workers is that everyone thinks that, oh, I'm going to do my spell, I light the candle and boom, that's it. And they forget about it. So candles are a really good way, especially so like this is a seven day candle or a pull out as people call it, <laughs> once you get in with the, with the coven, uh, or once you're a witch and you're in and you know, you'll know that these are called pullouts. Uh, what makes this a pullout? It means that this, this separates from the glass. Okay, so usually there's a glass, oh actually here, I'm swapping out. So, this is a pullout. So you have your candle, you have your glass, you put in, you pull out, okay? So, one of the things that I love about pullouts is that one, you can put all your herbs in here, they're really good, you'll read the glass as it burns, you can carve your candle and you have your case. Depending on what sect of witchcraft you're uh, catering to or what kind of magic you're doing, I was always taught that you wanna try to let your candle burn out completely. Uh, so what that means is you light it, you put it in a fire safe space, so I'll put mine in my tub, in my shower, in my sink, uh, or in the bathroom, or in like a bowl, uh, or in a glass, or in a bowl like of water, or uh, even sand. Um, and I just let it burn, okay? If you have to, for whatever reason, put out the candle, do not blow it out because you are blowing away your intent. You want to snuff it. So think snuff, save for later, blow out, goodbye. Make sense? Um, so, like I said, for baby witches out there, when you're doing candle magic, it makes you constantly remember. Because obviously, you're not going to just like forget the candle. Right. Um, so you're going to, every time you look at it, you have a reminder, oh, I'm doing spell work. 
and you'll know what this is for, okay? You'll know like, oh, this is the candle that I lit for Hugh Jackman. Um, so anyway, that's one of the things that I love about candle magic. It's kind of like a constant reminder to assist and have you constantly think about your working and remember what you're doing for. Because uh, one of the things you don't want to do in spell work, you never want to forget your spell, or you, you constantly want to remember it, okay, if right. that makes sense. Yeah. You want to keep it in your mind. That's really one of the things I love about candle magic. There are different kinds of candles. Anything in magic, so whether it be love spells, glamours, hexing, and crossing, um, all those things can be used or harnessed and achieved through candle magic. Do you have the, do we have those handouts? Yes. Uh. It's in my grimoire. This is Olivia's grimoire. It's my spell book. I.E. Book of Shadows, i.e. spell book. Anywho, so we have our days of the week, okay? Today we are Wednesday. That correlates with Odin's day, Woden's day, and that is ruled by uh, Mercury. So day of communication, okay? Orange, okay? We would use this for communication. Oh, it does smell like pickles. I told you. So, this is what would be used for communication. So orange is ruled by Mercury. So Mercury is the god of communication. And once again, just when you think of communication, really all it is is say that you want to have someone call you. Say that you want to open up communication with someone. Say that you want to do really well on an interview. Uh, any, say that you're auditioning for something. Anything to do with social or communication, you're, you're going to want to either use the color orange or you're going to want to do that spell work on a Wednesday. Can you use okay? uh, yellow and blue too? You can use yellow and blue as well. Okay. okay? I was like, that's what I've now, been using for Now, here's the thing. Oh, absolutely. Now, here's the thing. Say that you don't have a yellow or blue or orange candle. What color are you going to use? White. Okay? So if you are missing a color, if you don't have any colors, use a white candle. Okay, you can get those at CVS, Rite Aid, anywhere. Mm -hmm. See, that is Dollar plugging store. in. Dollar store, mm -hmm. all those things. So now let's go back to the top. Okay, so we have Sunday, also known as Sun's Day. Okay, and Sunday, not only is that communication, but this is where we're gonna boost energy. This is when we are going to do things for health. This is where we're gonna do things in regards to uh, achieving a goal, anything along those lines, we're gonna do Sunday, and that will be the wonderful color yellow, okay, or white, or orange. See where I'm going? Okay, so Monday is Moon's Day, white, silver, or black, okay? And Moon's Day, this is where we're gonna perform all types of magic. Mm -hmm. So really, if you're missing, so say that you miss out on that full moon, um, you can actually do it on a Monday, okay? So just make Monday your full moon day. Mm -hmm. um, and there are books out there called like moon spells, things like that. And one of the things that they don't talk about, like a lot of spell work really stresses the lunar phases, you can do it on a Monday. So just keep that in mind. Um, Tuesday, Tuesday correlates with Mars, okay? Mars is Aries. Aries has to do with achievement, fighting, going after what it is that you want. Okay, now here's the thing too. If you're doing a hexing or a binding, or if you want to push someone away, you would probably want to do that on a Tuesday as well. So those are definitely things to look at. Um, then we, we circle back, we did our Wednesday. Now we go to Thursday, okay? And that is ruled by uh, Jupiter, and that has to do with leadership, okay? So achieving what it is that you want, say that you want a promotion, uh, anything to do with Monday, that would be there too. Um, and also health, okay? In regards to healing, you would do that on that day. And then we go to Friday. Friday has to do with Freya. Freya's counterpart is Af uh, Venus. Uh, Venus and Aphrodite, so that is love. love. So all your sexy time candles, all your love candles, that's going to be there. Um, and then Saturday has to do with addressing issues, any issues. So anything that's holding you back, uh, if there are obstacles, this is when we would do an uncrossing candle. Um, if you want uh, anything to do with income, if you want to bring things in, we would do that on a Saturday too. Mm -hmm. Capiche? In regards to colors, we kind of touched on them a little bit, um, but really, black is gonna be for uncrossing 
banishing, sending away, okay? But black can also represent, and actually, in a school of thought the way that I learned, because black is the absence of color, this can also be used if you don't have a white candle. Mm -hmm. So you really can use white or black uh, in regards to uh, though, any magical work. In though here. most people stick with the white The one. white. Just because yeah. it's so much easier to obtain. It's easier to obtain. So right. if you're like, oh, I don't have any, I'm gonna use black, you might stress yourself out trying to find a black candle right. when you can just go ahead and find that white candle, right. okay? So black would be for banishing, uh, uh, sending away, warding. So warding is kind of protecting the home, setting barriers up. Uh, communicating and calling spirits, you would want to use a black candle as well. Though the same can be achieved with a white. When you think white, think purification, think protection, think blessing, think light. Whereas in regards to uh, spirit work or magic, you would kind of get more from the black. Okay, so blue, blue also, blue I see is communication, insight, healing, health, uh, tranquility, and emotions to kind of calm yourself down. Say that you want to calm down a situation or a situation is heightened and you just really want to put a kibosh on the whole thing, you could use a blue candle. This is candle. the calm your tits candle. Calm your tits candle, <laughs> blue. Okay, red is for passion, okay? The other thing too though, and this is really important and I can't stress this enough, a lot of people will go and get a red candle for love, um, mm. and I used to do the same, and I was little, like, ooh, like to me, or... this, you have to put the intent there. It's you have sex. to put the intent there. Because to me, what ends up happening is that a lot of people will think of the person that they want, they'll do the red candle, they'll be like, oh my god, it happened, but then it's a one-night stand, right. and your love candle turns into a hit it and quit it candle. <laughs> So it's the sex candle. Don't don't what? let it be the hidden quit. Sex and passion. Sex and passion. Purple is going to be for psychic insight, divination, uh, foretelling the future. You can actually use this for spirit communication as well. And also, this is a wonderful deity candle because it does represent spirits. So deities, ancestors, we can use purple as well. Green is going to be for money and finances and growth. All about the money. And you don't see them really often, but there are brown candles out there. Uh, and a brown candle would be for a uh, stability and also to nurture something, okay? To bring something into fruition, anything to do with the earth, okay? And gold and silver? Gold and silver. So gold and silver, the gold would be for prosperity, mm -hmm. finances, and riches. Silver would be more for the sacred feminine. A goddess candle and the gold could be for God as well. Oh, okay. Okay? Cool. So kind of things like that. Now let's go to, um, now here's the thing with herbs. You don't have to incorporate herbs with every candle, but you can. So I'm going to be working on a pull-out candle um, and I'm crossing, which I'll kind of show you guys how I go about doing it. And that, that will contain herb. I don't know why. My pinky's up. It's the class. <laughs> it's the class. It is. Faces of the moon. Mm -hmm. Oh, and now I can show you. So if you are going to take moon faces into consideration in witchcraft, okay, the full moon you could use for anything. Okay. So the full moon can be it's all just like a big energy pack. Like this is the time where you're like, and actually, I would use a full moon for like, what is your main desire? Mm -hmm. Don't do those petty spells during the full moon, yeah. okay? I'd be like, what do you want to accomplish? Do that during the full moon. So the waning moon means that it's going away. Things that you want to get rid of, mm -hmm. okay? Things that you want to banish, things that you want to remove from your life, okay? That would be a perfect time to do an uncrossing. Um, at the end of the video, there's going to be a count how many times I say the word uncrossing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but it's yeah. Like, ding! on the bottom. Ding. Um, so yeah, you can do an uncrossing. There we go again. Uh, uncrossing, getting away from. Okay. So with the, um, did I say that? That was waning. So to get away. Yeah. Um, the waxing moon, things coming to fruition. These are things that you want to achieve. Job interviews. Job interviews. Schedule them on waxing Schedule them moon. on a waxing moon. I've had a lot of requests to show how we would go about doing certain rituals, doing certain spells. There are endless ways. Pretty much everything is personalized. So I feel like the best way to find a way that works for you is to kind of jump in and uh, try out different techniques that you have seen or that you've been told about and see which one works for you. I use a blend of all the other ones. So, I mean, you'll find your style eventually. Disclaimer. We are eclectic witches. What that means is that we do not adhere to any specific path. Right. Okay? So, we are not wicked. 
Right. And that's yeah. another thing that's important. I get a lot of questions so, about Wicca. I'm not Wiccan. Yeah. I don't know anything about it. I'm and, sorry. <laughs> and we're also not, so there's also like traditional witchcraft. We really, it's just a blend of the craft. Yeah. And one thing that's important to know about witchcraft is that when you go through this, everyone practices differently. Mm -hmm. There's not one right witch, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, because the other thing too is that witchcraft, despite what people will tell you, witchcraft is a blend of many cultures, many beliefs, many occult and mystical beliefs. Especially kind of nowadays. Especially, Especially now. Nowadays. When we do this candle magic, it's not like, ooh, that's bad, or oh, that's wrong. There's no right or wrong. Right. Okay. So, um, so this, so again, this is an actual. Um, we're actually doing a spell. It's not a mock. Right. Um, it's it's how we would actually do it. So we're going to show you how specifically Dylan does his uncrossing candles. Right. And then side note. So like when you're using different candles, there are different tips. So I wanted to show this because I thought this was important. These are called figure candles. Oh shit! Are they melted in the car? Oh. Ah. Uh, pause. So we're gonna we're gonna cover figure candles. Okay, so figure candles. One way that I learned to go about doing these and I found very effective is that on the figure candles, this is a female figure, this is a male figure, they're gonna represent the couple in question. If I was doing this for a client and say that the client was a female, what I would do on the female's candle, I would carve the male's initial, and on the male's candle, I would carve the female's initial so that they're thinking about each other. And there are several ways to do this, but a ritual, I do it over the course of a month or over the week or a lunar phase. And what I would do is I'd have them apart from each other and there would be herbs kind of in between. They'd be dressed in their oils and every day I kind of bring them closer together, yeah. okay? Just and that's supposed to represent the growing of attraction, okay? Another thing you can do too, um, if you're just like, listen, I just want it, I want it done. I want it now, I want it to happen. You would take the two of them together. And sometimes they sell figure candles that are bonded. I like the ones that aren't. You would take the two of them together like so, and then you would get cord or twine. You would wrap it around the candles and you would light them and then you would let them burn down together with the respected herbs. Turning them into one. And turning them into one. And that's kind of like the reason why I like the separate ones. They do sell ones already together, mm -hmm. but I like that idea of Having forcing to, it. Yeah. <laughs> Not forcing it. Not forcing <laughs> it. Love me. I kind of feel like Disney fanatic. Like Ursula, when she's like, Flocking to my I call crying? Spells, Ursula, please. Spells, Dylan, please. Okay, okay so, so figure candles. Mm -hmm. Now, real quick, I'm sure you've seen skull candles around. I like skull candles because they are very good for influence. Bum, bum, bum. Communication, Communication, dream dreams, dreams, things like that. So say that this represented your boss, right? Okay, so this is your boss and you want a promotion, okay? Give Olivia a promotion. Give Olivia a promotion. Give Olivia. So you would kind of do something like, you could do something like every day, just write your initials on the person's head a person represents them, so they're constantly thinking about you. You can draw like a money sign, uh, and it, you can write promotion, uh, you can write think of me, things like that. Just okay? make sure you're and specific on the what, why they're thinking of you. Yes. Because, if because you boss, don't want... They're just thinking about <laughs> all of a sudden, All of a sudden, you Olivia comes be... into work and her boss is like, hey. stuck in my office. I, oh no! So yeah, just be specific. And there's, see, she caught me on that. Be specific. You always want to be specific. So you write your initials, promotion. You see me as a good employee, da 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 da. Do not just write your name and be like, think of me. Because then they're going to act on right. that thought of how- And remember, think of the color. color. So this color's red? Probably, no. Probably not. Don't do that for, don't use Business. this one. <laughs> you know? Also, if you don't, I like to use, this is a little ceramic skull that I got at the dollar store sometimes. Instead, if I don't have a candle, for a skull, I will actually just mm. anchor that on top. And let it burn down. Yeah, and I, I will write it on here and I will anchor it on top and let it burn over. For so influence. You can do the same thing. It's the same exact thing, it's just two different tools coming together. Love it, love it, it's so true. So now, we're gonna do this on crossing kettle. Oh. So, um. This tea is too good, get it away from me. Okay. I have a specific intent for this that I'm not going to share with you. Um, and I'm going to do an uncrossing candle here. So essentially, the purpose of this is to remove 
the muck, okay? Remove any obstacles. obstacles, issues, if things are stagnant. Also to give a sense of clarity, okay? So if there are communication issues, or if you guys are just not meeting each other, or and it doesn't necessarily have to be with you and another person, you can do an uncrossing for money to remove the obstacles that stand in the way of you receiving money or income, to remove the obstacles that stand in the way of maybe you have self-doubt so that you can audition or that you can perform, whatever the case may be, and a crossing candle literally is just to remove the muck, mm -hmm. remove the obstacles. Some people work with deities, others don't. Today's Wednesday, I'm gonna work with Mercury, okay? So I'm gonna call Mercury, I'm gonna be like, please, <laughs> the black remove, and then the white is going to ensure or promote communication, okay? So that's kind of my goal. So you can't really see it here, but the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carve for communication, I'm gonna honor Mercury, and I'm gonna do the Mercury symbol. So the Mercury symbol, for some of you who don't know, um, it is an Ankh, so an onk is kind of that circle, you know, that cross with the little loop on top. Uh, and then you're going to give him little horns. I will dress this with oils, which I will do. Uh, but then I put glitter on it. Um, so when I do, do you have glitter? I, I have gold no. glitter. But she was saying that she adds glitter in to cover flaws. Interesting. And so, yeah, I just thought I think everyone has, so I was, I add glitter in. Because clients like glitter. Because it's and aesthetic. It's pretty. Because if I were to just carve this candle, I mean, I just do it because. Yeah. I just do it because it's pretty. Because it's you pretty. don't have to add glitter, by the way. Um, the glitter to me is just to uh, boost the sigils uh, or the symbols mm -hmm. so that you can see them. Um, but if this candle is for you or if it's going to be in our home, you really don't need glitter. Right. I just do it to make the symbols pop, okay. okay? So the second symbol that I'm gonna put here, so we did Mercury for communication. The second symbol that I'm gonna put here, um, I'm gonna do a little heart, you know? Because why not? Do that little heart, carve that little heart to open the way, and that will also remove whatever is blocking the heart, okay? And then we're gonna put the person in question's initials. So what you're doing is you're, you're carving everything that you want to kind of help, I guess, banish or move away the muck on the black part of the candle? Uh, yes, no. Because I obviously don't want to get rid of their heart, nor do I want to get rid of the person. Right. But, yeah, so, I'm kind of just like carving, the black is going to take care of itself. So if the black goes on a sigil, that's not going to get away. Okay, okay. okay. I was just curious if that's But that is, do. that is a, a good thought. So you could write everything that you want to get rid of on, on the, the black. black side. And okay, then, and okay. then do the sigils for the white. So you could do that as well. So actually, because I'm going to take your advice, I'm going to do that on the back. Okay. So on the back, I will write, I don't want to remove everything. No. <laughs> all of it. Get rid of all uh, of it. The awkwardness. The facade. Ha! Oh, remove facade. that facade. Is it? Is that how you're writing? Remove that facade. Actually, I'm just writing facade. Okay. So now, I did my sigils. I wrote down what I want to get rid of. So now, on the bottom, we're gonna promote what it is that we want. Okay. So I'm gonna draw another heart because I want to boost that. I want to boost those emotions. Okay. So I'm gonna put that there. The other thing that I'll do too, I'm gonna draw the eye. I wanna be seen. So we'll draw an eye there. So I'm doing the eye of Horus, uh, which is an Egyptian symbol for protection and insight. Let's do, a, well I'm gonna draw a magnet. Oh, for attraction. cute, yeah. I like yeah, that. okay. And then the other thing too, I'm doing the feather of truth because we want truth. Okay, there we go. Perfect. So. So let me show you guys really quick what this kind of looks like, really, if I can. There we go. Okay, so you see the onk, the heart. Um, you'll see the pentagram, the eye, the magnet. And then on the back here, he wrote all the things that he wanted to banish up here. Okay? So that's kind of how you carve the candle. And you don't have to write everything out too. A lot of people also use anagrams. Yeah. So you can use that as well. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also gonna do one more thing. 
See, and this is kind of cool because I'm learning this. I, I usually will use candles for a very direct purpose, whereas I feel like uncrossing, I have not done an uncrossing candle before. So I'm so learning along with you guys. <laughs> I'm going to put all my herbs that I want in here. Okay. So the first thing we want to protect and banish, so we want rosemary. So the first thing that we're gonna use uh, in the encrossing candle on the bottom where the herbs are, I'm gonna put some rosemary to protect the spell and also to clear out all the look. And I don't need all of it, I'm just gonna do a little bit. I'm doing nine because nine is a sacred number of completion. And then I'm gonna put in some clove, okay? So clove will also kind of contain the spell. Oh, this is, yeah. Clove will also kind of contain the spell. And since these are individual cloves, I'm gonna put in three. Three, you don't have to work with sacred numbers. You can do what feels right, I do. Uh, it just kind of helps for me. We're gonna do three little things of lavender. The bottom is gonna be all the uncrossing and as we work our way to the top, we're going to do the attraction. Uh, so essentially, so you're kind building, of the opposite of the candle. Mm -hmm. So the candle is a banish and then the attraction. So you have the black, which is a banish and the attraction. And then the bottom is going to meet that halfway. Okay. That's kind of the logic behind that. And then frankincense and myrrh. Um, so to the Greeks and the Egyptians and the Romans, uh, frankincense and myrrh were very sacred. That's what you would burn. Uh, in the temples, so, and actually the Egyptians used... Cinnamon. Okay, well cinnamon we can sweeten the spell, okay. okay? Spice up your life, every boy, every girl. Um, from the wonderful witches, the Spice Girls. We're gonna use some myrrh. I'm gonna do one little nugget. <laughs> and knock it down. I'm gonna do some frankincense, so I'm doing one, two, Three. Now, we put in the herbs on the bottom of the glass. We carved our intentions and what we want to send away on our uncrossing. And now it's time to dress the candle, okay? So, I'm getting olive oil. Olive oil is uh, sacred to Apollo. Apollo is god of healing and prophecy, okay? But olive oil is also one of the original oils used in magic and actually before it was a cooking oil it was used for rituals and magic and blessings so ooh. Ooh. when i dress it we do two things so because this is on crossing typically what would happen you would have a solid candle and it would be for intent so if you wanted love you would dress the candle from where the wick is down to you to bring towards you if you want to send away you would dress the candle from the bottom to the top because this is dual sided, it has dual intent, okay? So starting here, I'm gonna dress the candle moving away because the black is what we're banishing for, okay? So I'm just gonna dress this and I'm gonna focus my intent removing the obstacles that stand in the way between me and this person that I wish to communicate with and strengthen things with. I'll go to the other side where the white is and now I'm gonna bring it down because I want to attract or bring something to me. You're gonna rub the oil over the sigils and what it is that you carved to. Um, and just imagine, you can even like trace your fingers and be like, bring that in, you know? We wanna emphasize the spell. Mm -hmm. So this is a hoodoo tradition. <coughs> Spit in it. Mm -hmm. So you give that extra oomph and essence of you. Activate. Pop it in. I'm gonna to top it off with maybe a little more rosemary. You don't have to, but I just kind of want to give this a little oomph, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so I'm gonna do that. There's a little rosemary. And then tonight, because it is a time for communication, I'll light the candle. Depending on how long the wick is, you may want to trim your wick, okay? And in regards to burning, I will let mine burn the whole time. Me too. Okay? Um, because you really just want it to go. If you are, you know, if you have issues with fire, if you really don't feel safe, um, and you have to put it out, or if you're in a home where you have no choice but to put it out, mm -hmm. snuff instead of blow. So once you finish your candle and it burns completely, then you'll look at it and you'll read. So if there is soot on the glass, 
okay, all the way down. So say that the whole candle's black, I would try again, okay? Something's that, in your Something's way. in the way. There are definitely obstacles. If you find that there is soot and it's black and it clears out, there then, was something in your way and, and it, you've it, removed it, it moved. It okay. Fell out of your way. And then you can kind of scry. And also, as you light it, look, is the flame heavy? Is it flickering? Okay. Are there things happening? Is it making sounds? Is it making sounds? If you want more insight, you can go to www.mysticdylan.com and look at how to read your candle. I have candle colors on there too. References. Candle magic reference, mysticdylan.com. So now we're going to answer a lot of, you guys have, you guys followed through and we have a lot of questions. A lot of questions. So we're going to try to um, get into as many. I got, I got all relaxed. We, we're going to try to get into as just works. Um, many questions as we can. And again, as I said, um, we're really only going to answer the questions that regard to candle magic specifically, just because that is what this video is about. So uh, the first question is by Sketchity One. Ooh. Sketchity One asks, "What is the most innov innovative way that you have used candle magic in your practice?" Hit <laughs> right off the bat. Bam. Um. Um. Candle magic is so versatile. It's kind of hard to pick one time. I mean, they're they're just. Uh, I mean, see, so here's the thing. I kind of reference or I go to candle magic first Same. before I do anything, anything else. So it, it's really hard for me to think like what's an innovative way because I can't think of a way that you can't use candle magic. Right. If that makes sense. Right. Um, but innovative in terms of like thinking outside the box, like some obscure way that I've kind of used uh, candle magic, I think honestly would be the, the influence, okay? Mm -hmm. Like using the using the candle to represent the person and then carving that intent in there to kind of influence that. Right. To me, I think that's just kind of genius because you don't have that person and you, you don't have that person, that's sympathetic magic. The candle will represent the person. Even though you don't have an Even actual article have about it. that person? Yeah. That so that that's kind of the way that I would, I think that's kind of the most innovative way, is using the candle as a substitute for something that you don't have. Right. I think it's Simon. Simon Gar Garza, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry, asks, what are the uses of candles with witchcraft? I've never understood what the actual uses are for them. Literally everything. Because here's the thing too, you also have to look at the time where, where candles came from. So candles were used to produce light mm -hmm. in darkness. Mm -hmm. uh, they're also made from, from the elements. They kind of represent the elements, they represent the element of fire. So in regards to witchcraft, it's whether it be for an intention, whether it be to shine light on something, whether it be to send something away, candle magic is used for all of that. Yes. Uh, Alton Moraine, Maureen, again, sorry. Are there any substitutes you recommend in place of candles where you're someplace that they're not practical or allowed? Feeling for everyone in the broom closet and in dorm rooms. I love it. Now, flameless candles, I guess you could use that. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing though is that you probably couldn't carve them. Um, but, are you ready? Crayons. No, somebody actually was asking about crayons, so. Crayons. You carve the crayon, you light the crayon. Now say that you can't burn anything. So if it's okay. that, if it's a matter of not being able to burn anything, uh, it would be cardboard paper uh, or uh, construction paper in that color. Cardboard paper in that color, and then you just flush it down the toilet or you bury it. Jamie B, hello. Uh, she says, what are your favorite types of candles to use? Do you like them to have a specific scent or color depending on the spell you're casting? Would you consider a candle a decent offering to a deity or ancestor? Thank you for your time. So your first question is, what are your favorite types of candles? I love, I love seven day candles. I love Me too. glass candles. Um, the chime candles, so the little ones. These are really good for uh, in a pinch spells. Quick. Um, yeah. Like quick, like let's get this done. The smaller the candle, for me, the smaller the spell is. Precisely. The bigger the candle, the longer it burns. The the, the more difficult the working, the bigger, the, bigger the, candle. the candle. Okay. Right. Um, now, and what did she say about deity? Her question was, would you consider a candle a decent offering for a deity or ancestor? Yes. Yes, but I also think that's not enough because usually you're lighting the candle to get the deity's attention but you want to offer them something else like incense water. or water. 
um, maybe some some uh, barley. So barley represents a hearth. Um, going back in regards to do I use scented candles? Mm -hmm. um, I don't because I'm gonna dress them with the correlated oils unless I'm making the candle myself. So if I make the candle from scratch, I will infuse it with my own scents. I don't necessarily go out and buy a scented candle, though you can. Saint Ezekiel with a three instead of an E asks, when I do candle spells, I always use white candles, but I have a ton of loose wax cubes that I melt for scent. Is it okay to dress my white candles with the melted wax from those cubes to add more intent? Like melting red and pink waxes over it for love magic, green and yellow for money, etc. Absolutely. That's a great that's idea. That's actually, talk about innovative candle magic. Yeah, that's an amazing idea. If you don't have the actual candles to actually melt those over. That's a you great melt idea. That wax. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I actually know a lot of people too, so I and I've done this. Say that I have a wax candle and I want to use a color, I burn a crayon really? and I let the colored wax drip over there set. You go. Color. Yeah. Really good question. Yeah. But I mean, you're crafting right. That's how you witch. <laughs> That's how you witch. Maria got gate got. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi. Hello. I just wanted to ask if it's possible to make your own uncrossing candles, and if yes, could you give us any examples and any tips to clean cleanse candles? To cleanse candles, literally anything, how you cleanse anything else with mm -hmm. smoke, with salt, with moonlight, with uh, Florida water. Florida water. There's that. There's that. New Orleans coming That's out. That's a whole other video. <laughs> it is. He could make a 40 minute video on Florida water. I totally could. If you make your own, so you can make your own on crossing candle, you would kind of like combine the white and the black wax to make that, or you can actually purchase these. That's what I do. I get a two toned candle. Yeah. And I carve it. Yeah. The Chaotic Witch with two V's, formerly the Great God Pan. What would I do if I got a candle from a superstore, one with a lot of energies attached to it, instead of a metaphysical shop, which cleanses it for you? Just cleanse it. Um, I'm also very into wards and disruption magic. Do you think candles would be used in such a way? Yes, no. Um, wards are usually done with stones or talismans because you want it to be permanent. Okay. You want it to kind of cycle through. I think if you use the candle, the candle would be great to cleanse the space, but it's not going to leave a permanent imprint mm -hmm. in regards to protection. You would have to kind of go through it again. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Light and love to you. Yay! <laughs> All right. I feel it. Spiritual Transcendence Tarot asks, can you possibly add some of the ways a candle can burn and the meanings behind it? Wax and wick. Also, something on wax divination as well. Not just dripping the wax and water, but also the way it hardens. Thanks in advance. If you don't want to go to mysticdillon.com and look all that up, I will tell you a few ways. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, if a flame goes back and forth, like, and it's going cray cray, mm -hmm. that's supposed to indicate that there are spirits at work, or there are other things in the room, or there's something uh, assisting you in some way, or there are, there are workings happening. Um, we talked about the soot. Um, another thing too, if there is white soot, white also represents spirit. So a ring of white or any sense of white is supposed to represent spirit or the supernatural. Um, in regards to wax divination, I always read the candle and I'll see what happens. Like, did any herbs come up to the top? Uh, did the black leave remnants anywhere? Where did the wax go? Um, and I'll kind of look at the markings and be like, you know, what did that mean? Uh, one thing when you do wax divination or divination is gen in general, a lot of people spend a lot of time looking at the images and trying to interpret. I make it a two-step process because it's easier. I will look and see what images I find, I'll write them down, and then I'll try to interpret it. Because if you spend that time, it's really just, just going gonna to- You're just gonna get into your head. You're gonna get into your head and you'll be kerfuffled. Mia Fine asks, how do you safely burn things inside without setting your fire alarm off? I nearly did. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh, put it in your shower. Oh, there you go, yeah. I put my candles in my shower. Kitty Cat asks, what sort of candles would you recommend for a beginner witch who's still in the broom closet? A close friend of mine and I are practicing in secret and would like to know what candles would be easiest kept hidden, especially in a secret altar. Tea light candles? Tea light candles. Birthday candles. Birthday candles. 
and if you have like two hours to char the chime candles. Or like these guys, I really like these guys because you can also get them um, at any store and they burn longer than tea light candles. So like these. And you can carve those too. You can carve those these can ones. be carved. Yeah. Oh, another thing too. Say that you don't want to carve on a candle or say that you actually want to see your image. Can I borrow one? Yeah. You can oh, write. Yep. Yeah. So you can actually draw sigils on wax with eyeliner. Okay? So let's do one uh, for communication. So now we'll get that Mercury slime. So, you could do that, draw a little sigil on a little candle, light it, and then when mom comes home or you have company, just turn it the other way. Oh. <laughs> or you can put them in like one of those little holders. Or you can put in a little so holder if, if that covers it. If, yeah, if you can't, if you just... Yeah, so you could actually write all that up, mm -hmm. okay? Do sigils all the way around. And then you just have a little candle in your room lighting. And then drop it in a holder. That's it. Yep. Cool. That's a good one. Uh, let's see. Pegasus 3. Asks, Love it. As a broom closeted person, can I use LED candles? Because I'm not allowed to light things in my room. And if so, how effective are they? If you want... Oh, wait. Ooh. There we go. There we go. If you are using LED candles, or if you're using candles in general to for deity or spirit work or... Um, to for ambiance or for oomph, use the LED candles. If you are using the LED candles for a specific purpose, I would that's when I would use my cardboard, my construction paper magic or something else. The reason being is because the whole idea is that as the candle melts, that intention is being applied. Or or do do charm bags. Yeah, do so a charm that's bag. Really good one. Or a green green bag. But yeah. I, yeah. I agree. I will usually use LED candles for a lot of things, but not for something that is uh, needing to be manifested. Precisely. That makes sense. I do not know how to say your name. Luckily, it'll be down here because I'm not about to try. I'm Enjoy. sorry. Can you use used candles? That's a good question. If a candle has not been used for witchcraft, I would say yes. Okay, just dress it, go about it, look at, you know, repurpose it. Mm -hmm. If it has been used in some spiritual metaphysical way, I would say no, because you don't know what energy is on that. Right, well, and you would have to... You could melt it, I guess. You could like melt it and like right. melt it and make another candle. Yeah. Um, well, but I, I would say is, is yeah, as long as it wasn't used for a working right. in magic, you could probably use Absolutely. used candles. Absolutely. But if it was, because you you wouldn't want to use a candle that was used for hexing uh, and then I, turn it into like job hunt. a job. Yeah, like it just it those because then it's already imbued with that energy. Precisely. Try to let that candle burn out. Okay, because your spell work is going to work and only intensify the more you pay attention to it. So if you light a love candle for two days and then you're over it, don't be surprised if that love spell does not work. Yeah. Okay, if you're doing something for business and you're doing something for money, like, okay, here's another thing too. Say that you light a candle for a job interview, right? Or a job career, right? You light it on the first night and you get the job interview and then you find out that you get the job. Don't just toss that candle. Let it work its purpose. Right. And then okay? bake it and... Because I know a lot of... I see a lot of... Uh, I have a lot of clients where I'll see a lot of witches and I'll go to the house. And, and not that I'm a judgmental witch. I totally am. No, I'm not <laughs> kidding. Um, but I'll be surprised how many people do petitions and workings um, and they just kind of let their like leave their stuff to the wayside. Right. You know? Where it's like you already put all that energy and that yeah. intent and that thought into it, even so why you, not carry it through? Right. So it kind of goes back to even if you need to snuff out your candle, let it burn to it, like snuff it out until it completely burns out. So to answer your question, there should be no leftover candles if it's for spell work. Right. So if it's just regular household candles, use them for spell work. But if you are repurposing a spell candle, 
that shouldn't be the case because there should be no leftover spot candles. Right. There we go. Uh, Rebecca Berry asks, can you use candles more than once? Also, if the spell says that it needs a certain candle, do you have to use that color? You're, you're such an inspiration. Keep doing what you do. Thanks. Uh, um, I think we answered most of that already. Uh, no, you don't need that certain candle. You can use white, white or, or black. black. Mrs. Malfoy asks, kind of off topic, but can do you use Bath and Body Works candles in your rituals? If so, what's your favorite scent? Um, I not specifically Bath and Body Works, but you know I go to Michaels and I like get all those three dollar candles, like the three for ten. I'm like, get, like I'm just like <laughs> clean them out. But you can use them, because uh, I like to use them a lot of the time in glamour spells. Ooh. So when I'm doing any of my makeup spells, like I have mentioned on my previous ones, I will light something that smells really good and that I like makes me feel glamorous. And uh, I'll light that every time I, I do any any kind of like certain glamours. But I usually won't use the candle itself as the spell, if that makes sense. It's more of like an assistance to the spell. Isabel v v Vassalis. I hope I said that right. Have you ever made your own candle candles? Do you know if it's cheap or if it requires a lot of tools and space? I live in a tiny apartment. Girl, it requires so much it tools does. and space. The only thing that I can tell you that I've done that has been easy is you get a bunch of crayons, you melt them mm -hmm. uh, with a wick and kind of do that. Yeah. There's a place, I think it's called Candle Science or something. I'll link that below. It's a really great website to get all of your candle stuff if you do want to make it, like get it into candle making, but there's, there's, it's also, you have to make sure that you have everything at the right temperature before you pour it. You have to boil, you know, like it's, it's yeah. very, um, meticulous. We have a coven member, uh, Jessica, and we kind of partner up because I make my own oils and stuff like that. And she actually makes the candles. So, right. so it's, it's perfect. We have a candle maker, but she even says it's, it's strenuous. Oh, uh, Catherine B, is it okay if I blow out the candle or should I use a tool for putting it out? Use a tool to put it out. Snuff. There you go. Um... Think of snuffing as saving for later. And then like blowing like out is ending. And blowing out is ending. Triple E3 reads, asks, any storage ideas for small and big candles that aren't being used? Yes, so I use a pencil case. Oh! Like a plastic pencil case. And I use a jar. So. So. Boom. Um, I'm gonna turn on this light because it's getting dark, y'all. It's getting dark. All right, well, I turned on the light because it's getting dark, and now it's like all awkward and yellow, but that's okay. We're gonna keep going. <laughs> uh, Hushbug asks, do you absolutely need candles and rituals? Love you so much. I love you too. No. You don't need candles. They're just, I love them. So, <laughs> but you don't need candles. Do you, I'm gonna answer this one just because this one needs clarification. Richard M asks, do you practice white or black magic? There's no such thing as either or, so... I, it's not candle, and I know I said I was gonna not brush on anything that wasn't candle magic, yeah. but I think it's a really important thing that y'all know that. That mm -hmm. it's not it's not good and it's not bad. It is it is energy. So it's if energy. It's, I give you a hammer, you can either build me a house or, or you can bash me over the head. Over the face. It's a tool, and it, it all depends on the person that's using it. Thank you! Uh, it's true. Thank you. Yeah, so that's, I just feel like it's a really important and thing. And this leads to the next thing. When you go buy books on witchcraft, you don't need to buy those books that say White Witch's Book of Spells. Yeah. Because you can. You but... can. You can, but the thing is that White Witchcraft is very. <laughs> I'm gonna say it. Say it. It's hella racist, okay? The whole idea of black magic, when you think of black magic, you think of. Uh, animal sacrifice, you think of roots, you think of uh, bones, things like that. The reason being is the Afro-Caribbean uh, community and African root work, that is what they used. Um, so the whole black magic is actually a very uh, racist, racist term. Okay? Um, so there's no... But you didn't know that. You didn't so know not, that. No, we're not trying to like... But just, but yeah, now you know. You know. <laughs> so in, in witchcraft, witchcraft is neither black nor white, it is a tool and it's how you use it, okay? You get heated about it, sorry. But yeah, like you didn't know that we're not trying to like yeah. get upset at you. It's just something that like everybody really needs to know practicing. Oh, I'm a baby witch wondering what an uncrossing spandal, uh, wow, that was so dyslexic. <laughs> what an uncrossing candle spell involves since Dylan seems to know a lot about them. Aww. Love your video. <laughs> Sam Jim. <laughs> and now you know. <laughs> 
We have a few more. Uh, the reason I didn't get to everybody's is because, again, we, we already answered a lot of them. Good um, questions, too. But yeah, amazing of, questions. And I love how everyone's kind of on the same sink. Right, so that means... Sink? 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 Sink. 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 <laughs> Cycle. So, um, the last one that I think... Last one. ...going to do is uh, Topaz, Topaz Barrel, I think. Do you always have to dress your candle, or can't you just light it with some herbs? You don't have to always dress you it. You don't. Um, I will sometimes dress the candle with oil and then put the herbs around it. Um, I do that too. Sometimes so I will rub, I will crush them and put them into what I've carved. It really yeah, just depends. Yeah, it's really up to you. Sometimes I won't use herbs. I'll just use olive oil. Yeah, sometimes. So sometimes you don't it's even really use just to switch it up. That pretty much covers yeah. all of our questions so far. That covers the basis of candle magic. Candle and magic just, is come, candle magic is so versatile. Yeah. If you get tripped up. Uh, rosemary can be used in place of anything. If you're missing fancy, schmancy, smelly oils, use olive oil and white candles. Uh, white candles. Those are your bases. Boom. There you go. So happy which Wednesday or woo woo, woo Wednesday. Thank you. Bye. 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 And remember, when in doubt, there's a candle for that. My witchcraft brings all the boys to the yard and they're like, it's, it's better, better than yours. yours. My spellcraft is better, better than, than yours. yours. I can teach, teach you, but I have to charge.